Hello, good morning or good evening, depending when you are today. And most of us in home home countries and some stuck in other places. And still, we deal in absolutely same problems. We all humans, and we do deal with pretty similar circumstances from time to time. It is Motivation on Monday by Jim and Lucy, and today we are talking about how your brain tricks you into so-called secure but non-productive behaviors. And it is a very interesting subject. I remember years ago when I was a teenager, I really got into reading uh, different books on the therapy and psychology and how the brain works, all the, all the uh, biochemistry and all that stuff. That was exciting to me, and it looks actually much simpler now because you see and you experience sequences uh, going through the same circumstances from time to time, and you see that how your brain actually can trick you into things when you get afraid about something, and you start overthinking, you overthinking, or your brain just to so-called secure you, start getting you into these different scenarios that are not actually happening, but you're thinking, what if this happened? Am I ready for this and this and this and this? And then you get really overwhelmed, and then you get really scared, and then you get what? Not productive. Yes, that happens, and it, it happens easily. <clears throat> In fact, I believe that it happens to not just most of us or many of us. I think it happens to all of us. How many times we watched uh, watch something in the news of a celebrity that looks like they had it all going for them from the outside? They made us laugh. They made us fall in love. They they had a wonderful song or something that really touched us. And then we find out later on that they had some great difficulties in their own personal life of acceptance and feeling loved and feeling close to someone that really mattered to them. They didn't feel like the whole world was really cheering them on. They felt there was always someone that was rejecting them. And yet we wonder, how is that possible to feel that way? Well, we can. I remember a few days ago, I sat in the patio here. We've been working in Europe for a while now, and we're from Denver, Colorado. But here I am working on the patio. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning, and I have downloaded all of these productivity apps. I mean... Managing my time, managing where I spend too much or too little here and there. I had all these alarms from my Fitbit device, from my mobile phone, from Cortana on my mo- my desktop, Cortana on my mobile phone. All these things were working, and it seems like nothing was really in sync. I looked at my task list on my CRM program and all the things I wanted to do. I look at my outlook, I look at LinkedIn, I look at Twitter, and I felt depressed. I forgot, how am I going to get it all done? And then I discovered a day later after pushing my chair back in the patio and thinking, I don't have to get it all done. I only have to get the most important things. And all those things that I was really trying to focus on, they weren't all important. They weren't, at the end of the day, going to get me for where I needed myself and my family to be. And at the same time, what good is it to to be or arrive somewhere if you're not happy? So I have to go back and recalibrate myself because and focus on the things that really, really meant the most. That's true. Focusing on the most important things, that's important. And yes, sometimes it feels tricky. And if, even, I mean, in some cases, some of us will probably need medication when brain really tricks you into those sequences all the time. But most of the cases, what we can do, A, focus on the most important tasks and think of what is important. Just look on your list of tasks if you're overwhelmed because of that. And think what is important. Take what is the most important, what moves you closer to your dream, and do that. And if you just get stressed and scared about all the scenarios that what if this will happen tomorrow, am I ready, am my family ready, am my relationship ready, are we all ready? So there are a couple things that you can do to snap yourself out of those sequences and trick your brain actually back into the normal. The first one is usually recommended by doctors will be uh, meditation, works for many of us, 
and the second one is actually trick used in therapy what is the doctor called when you take the idea take it to the court so you have this idea that something bad happened because something just get wrong way and you are not ready and then all the other sequence of bad things happening after that just analyze what is the probability? It's always a probability that something bad will happen. It doesn't mean we have to sit and rethink about it all the time. It is not a productive way of living. Think about it, what you can do today to get you prepared for more unpredictable situations. Think about it. Think about positive things. Look around. Enjoy the sunset. Enjoy the nature. Enjoy the people around you. Relax. Take your self-motivational sequences into action. I mean, if you need additional day off, just take it because you need it. If your brain tricks you in those so-called secure scenarios because you need to rethink all the possible ways of what can go wrong, snap yourself out of it by taking additional day off. It might help a lot. Now, for me personally, all I do is just... On my mobile phone, I just have multiple photographs of Lucy, and I just look at that, and all of a sudden, it's like a shot of adrenaline, and I said, wow, I'm a lucky guy. And I snap out of it, and I said, okay. I see her walk across the room here in our office, and I say, hubba, 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 okay? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'm ready to go, because she doesn't have to wag her finger at me and say, did you make that phone call? Did you go do that? And I say, I really got it done. And you're the same way. But listen, seriously, I know that there are a lot of things in your mind right now. Sometimes it can feel like the whole world is coming, is tearing apart. It's not tearing apart. There's always something going on. But I remember years ago when I had four kids at home and we did, and, we, and I, had, I was worried about this, worried about that. And there was always one more thing. But I want you to recognize it, is that there's always going to be bills. But you have, you have bills, you're worried about the rent, you're worried about the car payment, you're worried about are you showing enough time for your wife and your children, and then you're wondering, am I getting exercise at the end of the day? Well, first, do this. You have a Fitbit or some kind of exercise device or even just your mobile phone. I have mine set that it reminds me every hour am I being mobile. So in that hour of what I do now starting today, I get up and I make sure that I exercise and I have my timer on for five to 10 minutes every hour or so. I do my push-ups, I do my sit-ups, I do my curls, I do something, my yoga, something. All right, stretch it out and get it done. But when you feel tormented that you don't have enough money to do this or that, I remember the old story I used to have, I read years ago about what the woman did. So this husband was sitting up in the middle of the night in bed and he just could not get up. He tried to fall asleep and he'd wake up fall asleep and he wake up. His wife, annoyed by all of his movement in bed, and she asked him one time, she said, what's going on? What's wrong with you, honey? He said, I don't know what I'm going to do. The, the, the mortgage payment is due tomorrow, and the car payment is due tomorrow, and I don't know what to do. There's just not enough money. So she said, let me, let me think about this. So she got up herself, and there he was, pacing the floor. So she called the president of the, of the bank that had their mortgage. She said, Ron, I'm sorry, but we're not going to be able to make that mortgage payment tomorrow. Goodbye. She hanged up on him. And that was it. Her husband looked around at her, and he said, what did you just do? And she said, see, we don't have to worry about the mortgage payment. You can go back to sleep. Well, sure, it's in the back of his mind. It doesn't disappear, but she taught him a lesson. You worry about what you can worry about. You make a decision on what it is, what you can do, and then you set it aside. And you, then you focus on solutions. You don't keep worrying about how bad it's going to be. As Dr. Phil used to say, they can beat you, but they can't eat you. All right? So you get up and say, today is going to be the day, not tomorrow. I'm going to do it. The things that matter the most right now, I'm going to get up. Nobody has to make me get up. I'm a person, get up my set on my own hind legs, and I'm going to make it happen. So no matter how hard and scary it is, there is always better to focus on solutions. Jim is correct. And to focus on solutions, use our tips to trick your brain back into the productive mode. Because when you're not productive and stressed out and overthinking those situations again and again, and what could happen next, 
you're not productive, you're not working on solution. You're not working on solution, you're getting yourself into a worse situation. So it will be the circle you're not able to break. You don't want that right. at all, ever. And we don't want that for you. Right. You could try what I do sometimes. I just imagine that if I'm not doing all the things I know I need to get done, that Lucy's standing right behind me saying, boo. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is Motivational Monday by Jim and Lucy, and this is our motivation for you for this week. Don't, don't forget to contact us. We'll be more than happy to work with you. We're compassionate, but I'll tell you one thing we're going to do. We're going to push you so you see some results. Do not forget to check our Patreon program, and if you need your one-hour productivity booster, you can book it on bit.ly slash 15 Lucy. That's a short link for you for your success. I'm waiting for your next call.